I'm calling this meeting to order on Wednesday, November 4th, 2020. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Helen Kahn, Chair Commissioners Absent, um, and announcing to all that this Zoom meeting is being recorded. Is there anyone here for public comment? No, no. moving on to agenda item three. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Oh. sorry. Yeah. it looks like um, Andrew is raising his hand. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see you. There you are. Hi, how are you guys? Go ahead. Um, so I was just uh, just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, so I noticed on the agenda that there was the license that was the non-transferable from Sierra Grill. Um, and currently I'm, I'm following all the rules with the cordials that we, we discussed at the last meeting and I'm in process of, try, of negotiating with a couple other businesses that are going out um, about the liquor, full liquor license obtaining and nobody's really getting back to me and I'm just trying to do whatever I can to move forward. And I was just calling to see if I could be in consideration for purchasing or how, I don't really know how it works with that other license, but I would like to be considered for that license if, if possible. Yeah, I think when we get to that agenda item, we'll start to talk about what the process looks like. Um, I'm hoping Annie has some guidance to that end because Helen and I were not on the commission at the time when this last came up in 2014. So we'll have to see, but thank you. Of course, thank you. Letting us know. Is there anyone else for public comment? No? Okay, so item three, public hearing on an application for pledge of collateral and transfer of an annual all alcohol package store license. Um, Deer, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, incorporated DBA Nikki's Liquors at 24 Haydenville Road Leeds from Enlightening Strikes incorporated DBA Leeds package store. Hi. Hi, Annie, do we need to open, can you just run me through the process one more time for the public hearing? You're muted. I am. Um, the, we just need a motion to open the public, uh, public hearing. Okay, then I'll make a motion to open the public hearing for agenda item number three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Annie, we can take public comment or take the comment on that now? Uh, yep, now. Okay. Good to go. Okay. Should I proceed with a presentation? Yes, please. Okay, if it please the board. Uh, my name is Arthur Perlman. I represent Pregnish Patel and Deer Inc. They're seeking a transfer of the package store all alcohol liquor license, all alcoholic beverages liquor license currently held by Enlightening Strikes Inc. for the premises at 24 Haydenville Road in Leeds. I've submitted an affidavit and exhibit relative to the published notice. Mail notice to abutters is not required for this type of a transfer. Dear Yink is a Massachusetts corporation. Pregnant Patel is the sole officer, uh, director, uh, and stockholder. Uh, Mr. Patel is currently living in Winchester, Massachusetts. Mr. Patel is a 50% owner of a business in Tewksbury and 100% owner of a business in Gardner, both of which have liquor licenses. Jigna Patel, who is the proposed manager, lives in Stoneham, Massachusetts, and will be the manager in this business and spend at least 40 hours a week at the store. The business currently operating at 24 Haydenville Road in Leeds is licensed to open seven days a week, hours of, my understanding is 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday and Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. And Mr. Patel requests these same hours. The layout of the store will be as per the floor plan that we submitted with our application. Uh, Pregnant Patel already being in the liquor business and Jigna who has been training at the Gardner store are both familiar with the laws relative to chapter 138. Um, additionally, they both have been tips trained and have their certification. Uh, Pregnus and Jigna will not only uphold the statutory law, but will familiarize themselves with any um, rules or regulations that may be particular to the city of Northampton. Uh, we are also seeking a pledge of this license to Customers Bank uh, to secure a note from them, a copy of the pledge and security agreement, as well as the note were submitted as part of our application. I would respectfully request that a transfer of the license and a pledge of the license uh, be granted. 
Thank you. Annie, do we have um, have a floor plan? I don't see one in the application. Uh, I must have only sent you like the the ABCC application. I do have okay. one. Um, it's at my office. Okay, no problem. But I can, I mean, I can send it along tomorrow. No problem. I was just curious because you mentioned it and I didn't recall seeing it. So this is, so the, the business that's currently open at 24 Haydenville Road is going to be expanded into the other side of the building. Is that, is that what's happening? The plan is to open yeah. up the whole store. Okay. Annie, did you have any issues with any of the paperwork? The application looks good? No, uh, it looks good. I did not have any, no issues. Okay. Helen, do you have any? No, I, mean, I do not. It seems like everything's in line, so. Okay. Brian, are you there? I think I see you. Yeah, no, no issues. Okay. Um, then we close the public hearing, Annie, before the motion? Yep. Okay, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for item number three. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, does one of you want to make a motion for approval? Um, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for pledge of collateral and transfer of an annual all alcohol package store license um, as detailed in item three of the agenda. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Good Thank luck. You. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Item number four, application for transfer of common victualler license for Iconica Social Club, LLC, transfer of ownership, new ownership, Jimena and Will Quinton. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Hello, Jimena. Hi. Can you, can you say your name for the record so I know how to pronounce it? Yes, Jimena. Jimena, yeah. great. Thank you for coming. Um, so you've purchased Iconica? Yes. Great, congratulations. Thank you. Um, do other commissioners have any comments? I'm just gonna pull up their paperwork. Oh, I mean, I looked through the paperwork and it, Looks like everything's in order there, right, Andy? We're not missing anything, or it's all there. Oh, Annie, you're on mute. Did you? Did oh, I wasn't saying anything. I just shook my. Oh, okay. Head. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, no issues. I have everything okay. I need. Great. Awesome. Congratulations then on your your new venture. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything. Brian, do you have anything? Brian, do you have anything? No, I don't. Can you hear me? I don't know if it's just on my user end, but I'm not hearing anything. Yeah, I couldn't hear anything either. Okay. Um, Brian, maybe you can call in so we can hear your voice. There's a call in number. Okay, well, we can go ahead and move on with the approval. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the application for transfer of a common victor license for Iconica Social Club as outlined in agenda item number four. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Brian, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could text him for a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Thank congratulations. <laughs> Item number five, discuss the liquor license subject to Chapter 109 Acts of 2016 and the means for reissuance. You're, it's all you, Annie. <laughs> So you're going to, you're going to have, you guys are going to have to come up with a process on how you want to reissue the license. Um, so I sent you that article from yep. 2014. So I guess there was two public hearings that were held um, to screen applicants, I guess, essentially interview them. 
and then those names that were qualified were put into a hat and essentially someone picked it out, picked the name out of a hat and that's who got the license. So you could do it that way. Um, I mean, in, or if there's another way that you think would be, would be better. And at that time, the Sierra Grill had to pay a $10,000 fee so no, those they were referring to the um, all alcohol seasonal restaurant licenses because okay. those were to be converted. That was a ten thousand dollar fee. Um, but Sierra Grill didn't pay anything. These licenses really hold no monetary value, so um, they can use the license as is for that business. But now that Sierra Grill is going out of business, he doesn't have the luxury of transferring it for a, a fee right um, so it just comes back so whoever would get the new license they would um, operate as they are now and if they were ever to change kind of like the Ibiza tap tapas license if they were ever to change or anything then it comes back to the city in an ideal world and how did the notification go out for that last time and for people to apply that I believe I believe it was a legal notice in the newspaper twice. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look into that more. I, I reached out to attorney Seawald today to get some more information and I never heard back. So um, I mean, I, I'd have to get back to you with more information on how we would do all that. Yeah, so I mean, I'd be interested to hear from you him i mean do we essentially really have free reign on this i mean is it up to our commission to decide if we do it that way as a lottery and pick out of a hat or if we just assign it to someone yes. entirely up to us yes okay interesting okay yeah then when does it come has, has it come back to the city already is o'brien closed completely he is closed um this City has um, obviously they've forgiven the renewal payment, um, so we're, the city will eat that cost, and O'Brien will sign the renewal so the license can actually be renewed, and then it can be reissued. Okay. And do you know, I know you said the, it sounds like the paperwork is not too tidy from that time period, but um, was there just some sort of application form that that prospective uh, establishments filled out? And then, and how was that reviewed? Do you know? I believe they, they filled out the regular transfer, new license application paperwork, because I know there's there's like four files in my desk at work for the applications that were submitted and they didn't get it. Um, so mm -hmm. they would submit um, everything and then it would go to you guys for review. And then you would most likely hold a public hearing to listen to everybody and then you would either decide if you wanna choose or if you wanna put it in a hat. Mm -hmm. And I guess the next question is, does that decision need to be made before we receive the applications? Like, I mean, is it considered a fair process if we say this is the process that, you know, everyone will be applying and then we're putting in the hat or are we just saying everyone's applying and then we're going to decide how to, how to issue the license? I mean, before everyone applies, I will, it would probably be good to know what the process is. Yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah, it seems a little like, oh, yeah, it doesn't seem right to maybe get the applications and then decide, just for mm -hmm. transparency and fairness. Right. Hey, Annie. Hi, can yes. You hear me? Yes, we can. Um, <clears throat> do you uh, happen to know the date, or can you find out the date when the special legislation went through on those? I think there were five licenses. I want to say we did a, a lottery like that and we pulled out of a hat. I just I can't remember. It was in 2014, I believe it was in July. You mean like when the special act went through or when the lottery was held? Yeah, we held a lottery. I just can't remember if we did it by pulling names or 
I, I just, I don't know, it's just vague to me. I know, Brian, so, you were the only one that was on the commission at that time, including me. So, yeah. and I can't, I can't locate the minutes from those meetings. Um, I don't know where they went. So, yeah, let's say, I want to say that we did have um, quite a few applicants and we did pull out of a hat. Um, I did. That. I did find today in some old files the, the cards that were used to pull out of a hat and they were they were all the individuals that eventually got the special act license because right. I believe okay. the license I it, it was um, Eric Shore's license and it was revoked and then the lottery was the license was given to Bistro Lagra and then the four individuals that also applied weren't I guess weren't okay with that outcome so that's when the mayor went to the state to um petition for four additional licenses which is right. one of the ones now that we're discussing right okay so i just wanted to see if you knew anything about that but i do believe we we had that pull out of a hat style lottery so are you saying there were a total of those it was a total of five establishments that applied or there were more but there were four establishments who had some issue with it i mean, I, mean I, I didn't more, realize that, that was the history that then he went and there were more than applied and um you know so i think there were some people that were bummed you know what i mean that they weren't picked yeah so, so i think seven. that's the it looks like there was were seven names that were put onto a card that were then put into a hat huh. one right. of them one of them never opened the other one it was the hinge which i think i believe there was some criminal something criminal with the owner at the time yeah. yes andrew shaking his head yes <laughs> yeah i recall yeah. that too <laughs> yeah <clears throat> If we did, it seems we should follow. I mean, it was done before in a lottery fashion, like take in the applications, approve the applications, and then pick one randomly. Seems, um, sorry, I keep dinging there. Seems fair since it's how it's been done in the past, but I would be curious to, if the minutes could be found so we have certainty. Yeah, I mean, I can keep looking. My predecessor didn't have the neatest files. Was Attorney Seawald around at that time? Yes. Maybe he knows. Yeah. So what's our timeline for this then? If it hasn't come back to the city yet, is that anticipated? I mean, it hasn't like, it hasn't physically been returned to the city, but I mean, it, it's, it's our license to do with how we, how you choose. Yeah, I, I'd say I'm in agreement with Natasha. If that's if we can verify that that's the way it was done previously, it seems that that's the way we should be doing it again. I think I remember somebody saying that someone, like someone from the audience, picked the name out of the hat. Like it was very informal. Yeah. Right. Figure out how to do that in the Zoom. Right. Now, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean. Um, I can always try and get more information from attorney Seawald and it can be decided on at the December meeting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll say I'm also curious about how it transpired that it was done that way. One person, one establishment was picked and then what it was that these other establishments argued that they mayor then go to the state and get more licenses. Um, well, that's the thing too, with only one of them, you know, maybe you uh, you look at who's going to apply and then have them present their best reasoning, you know what I mean, as well. So there's another option there. I mean, it was different when there were five, you know, and, and only seven people did it. Now you're going to have, you know, you could have 12, you know, or seven people going for it and only one, and, you know, that's the odds on that. Or, 
I don't know. It, you know, what I'm just saying is, do you go to each business and say who's got the best business plan or who's got, you know, I don't know. Or you just do the lottery either way, but just another idea. Although it sounds to me like originally that is what was happening last time, right? That there were seven, there was just one license, right? Is that what happened? I mean, this is what I'm understanding from what you're saying, that there was one license available, there was this lottery, and then there were people who were upset with that, which for whatever reason inspired, motivated our, our mayor to then go to the state and get more licenses, right? Is that? I mean, the mayor's so. always been an advocate of more changing the liquor license laws. Like he, he's always kind of griped about the fact that it's an antiquated system and it doesn't really match up with how cities and towns operate and so he's always been maybe they weren't upset maybe he just wanted to do it yeah. because he's that's what he does so I, I i don't know i mean i can certainly ask him to right yeah we should just eliminate the if it were the process that we're off that caused people to be disgruntled or if it was just an opportunity for the mayor to to make an effort to get more mm -hmm. yeah I'm curious about history yeah so um, that, no sorry no go ahead i was gonna say because honestly i don't know which would cause more ire if it would be us doing it with this random you know if everyone is approved and then we pick up that versus the three of us making a decision based on that and what to say this is the best random, thing we can, you know. Random out of a hat would be less anger towards us. That's Our opinion, exactly. picking one, would be lots of anger towards us. So, right. Yes. Yeah. However you want to deal with it. Yeah, know? I mean, how would we even establish the criteria to make that choice? You know, the application right. should be, be that this is in good standing and you know, Correct. They have it would be based on opinion and bias right. and all that, and everybody could raise many, many arguments. Yeah, so, inherently that doesn't sound fair in a situation. No, like and that's why I think we ended up pulling out of the hat last time. So, okay. yeah, I guess last time the commission established a set of criteria: um, applicants must meet all legal qualifications to operate a license. They must convert. Oh, this was for the seasonal. Um, they must put the license to use within six months of it being issued. Um, and the license commission also reserved the right to use its discretion to consider the broad interests of the city and its residents in deciding the issuance of the license. So should we, if you could get the information history and then make the decision at the next meeting how how we'll do it okay so you want to know how the how the lottery process came to be well i don't know i guess we can decide now if we i mean it seems like that's the process that we would want to take do we yeah. want to make a decision I, now i feel like we've um just kind of considered both styles and yep. we realized that you know a hat's probably the fairest so yeah i mean i like yeah that would be well, my oh here's here's an idea ten thousand dollars to for as many times you want to go in the hat <laughs> <laughs> raise money for the city no so extortion <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> make sure that makes it in the minutes Annie. <laughs> no 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 it's a non-profit <laughs> yeah i mean if now. It seems the fairest way to do it. I don't, I can't, I'm sure people were disgruntled the last time. Nobody is happy if they don't have the winning ticket. Mm -hmm. um, if right. there weren't other reasons to be disgruntled about the process, then I don't see why we wouldn't have the application, make sure that their business in good standing so they get in the hat and then figure out how we're going to have a Zoom uh, draw. lot of drawing, yeah. yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think it sounds like uh, we should just go forward with this. I don't know that there's a reason yeah. to delay since we all seem to be on the same page. Yep. Yeah, I'm in. 
I'm in. All right. Um, so I just need to figure out the process, like if we're going to have to uh, publish a legal notice and or hold like a public hearing. Um, so right. I, I will look into all that. Yeah, I guess that is really important because who reads legal notices? No <laughs> that seems like that could generate some disgruntled people if they missed it mm -hmm. right there i'm also sure i bet that the gazette would do a story on this because it's it's liquor licenses are always a newsworthy topic yep so um yeah okay big news so did you want to set like some criteria or for the application? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you have to follow, just so it's all legal. I mean, they have to be within good standing. Well, yeah, so that, that goes without saying, because they have to prove that before they even submit an application. But I guess I mean, like, um, I, just because the last time they, you had to make sure word, that, yeah. They put it into use within six months, and um, and also to see that you're going to be open like for the the whole week instead of two days a week or something like that, right? Is that what you mean? Like we we could come up with different criteria of that sort. Yeah, that would be great. So we don't have another like pocket license. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. Okay. I'm sure we could put our heads together for that. Yep. Well, it sounds like, you know, whatever they did last time, it sounds like that was reasonable. I don't know, do we need to, I know there was the seasonal bit, which we can ignore, but um, um, can we just follow that same approach? Or was there something that was overlooked? Well, I just think, you know, given the opportunity, the more detailed we are with it, the better off it's gonna be for everyone, so. Yeah. Instead of just following suit, it's not always, you know, history repeating itself, so on and so forth. So maybe we just kind of look at it and and uh, make it better if, the, if there's a possibility. Um, and then I guess there's the consideration: does the pandemic pandemic change things? I mean, is that, I guess it's it's still reasonable to say that it gets put into use within six months, unless we think there's yeah. Some I mean, expanded. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know, why would, why would we, first of all, isn't this going, so somebody that doesn't have a license right now can get this and be in business, or is this something that's going to change somebody's seasonal license to an all alcohol? No, it's no conversion. It's no seasonal. Forget the seasonal piece. Yeah, yeah so it just goes straight up, because I'm like, why don't you just take a viable business that's already doing it, you know what I mean? Uh, but, I, uh, um. Oh, that's why I was asking that question. I didn't know. So that would, to me, that wouldn't be fair. If somebody's like, oh, I want to start a new business, but yet somebody's been in business for years and would love the opportunity, you know, it just doesn't seem like, you know, they come to the plate all of a sudden and bang, they got the license. Yeah, kind of like, you know? kind of like Andrew. He's ready to go with it. And he, and it would, I don't think it would be fair if we didn't put a time period on it. Well, well, I'm just saying it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be six months. It should probably be, you know, 60 days or whatever you need or, or less. I mean, I don't know. What's a, what's a viable option on that? Or do you, and do you want to, and just, this is just food for thought. Do you want it to go to someone who's been, uh, already, uh, restaurant owner because because like kind of like what brian was saying like if someone finds out oh i could get a liquor license they could move from new york and get their liquor license and start their business but but is that but do, but is that do you want that i i, I don't know no yeah. I, mean, I, don't that's, that's fair. I think it should be I would say that, existing yeah go ahead Sorry, yeah, I was going to say i mean just to piggyback on you brian and annie yes i think that that is something that I'm fine with saying it needs to be an existing business. Yeah, I believe that too. Yeah, because yes. I know there are a lot of wine and malt holders that 
would love a full liquor license mm -hmm. and have been operating with a wine and malt for years. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think somebody that's open, you know, four days a week or more, you know, would be something to consider and definitely um, an operating business already in the city. But you have to ask Seawall if that's legal. I don't know if you, you know, you guys, you, you, you guys basically have free reign here to make your own process. Oh, well, there you go then. I mean, I'll obviously run it by him, but I'm po pretty positive that you, well, the mayor told me that today. So, okay. Um, I'm just trying to think is there any reason to say that it's an existing business who already has a wine and malt license, or are we not restricting it in that way? Like, could it be a restaurant who has no? serves no type of alcohol and wants to jump to full alcohol. I don't know if there's, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if there's a reason to, to put that limitation on it or not. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, but yeah, like I say, I'm really just totally throwing it out there. I don't, not that I have any, I don't actually the know key, one the other. The key thing is if somebody's not serving right now at all, I would be more inclined to go with somebody that is serving because they're in it to win it, so to speak. You know what I mean? They, they've been doing it. They know how to do it. And they're not testing because what we don't want to do is just be back here in six months to a year doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If they don't make it or it doesn't work out, I would think. I mean, I know not that we can, you know, have that kind of bias, but I just think somebody that's experienced that's you know, going to utilize the license, that's, that's what we want, right? We want somebody to prosper with it. And I think that's an important distinction if, if we're going to ask that it be put into use within 60 days instead of six months, if we have seasoned wine and malt establishments that already, that are, you know, don't have any violations against them, um, they've demonstrated a responsibility with that license as opposed to being, having no experience with any alcohol of any sort in your mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that something, I mean, can we, it sounds like we're all sort of on the same page that we're saying an existing establishment that Ari's holds a wine and malt license. I don't know if that's a yes for everyone or maybe, and, um, and we can put, you know, like Ryan was saying something to say that you're gonna be open four or more days a week. Mm -hmm. um, in, I mean, I guess there's the whole, the caveat of, unless the state does not allow you to be, you know, I mean, who knows what's happening with the pandemic, you know, it, unless the circumstances beyond your control or state, you know, order right. mandated. Um, and then I know you were saying, and it needs to be used within 60 days, or maybe we say 90 days. I don't know, just to give, because it sounds like if it's going to one of those businesses, we know they're going to use it. And if for whatever reason, there's a three month delay, I don't think it's the end of the world. So, yeah, because the ABC yeah, is moving at a glacial pace. Right. Um, not that they always haven't, but so, yeah. You could say 90 days, but we prefer, um, you know, that you move, um, you know, consistently uh, move towards opening. If you can do it earlier, then, then great. And, you know, because you're right, they got to get the ABCC and then they got to buy all their, you know, set up their establishment accounts or whatever and get their alcohol and so on. So. Okay, so just a recap. So I have... Um, someone that would be open four days a week or more, um, an already operating business with a wine and malt license. Or did we decide, did you decide on that? Does everyone feel okay with that? Yeah, you have to have some kind of license. So some kind of alcohol license? Right. I would, I would say. I don't Can know. I, is that fair? <laughs> well, we just said that we can do whatever we want. The bottom line is, is what, what I think in my logic is, is we want to do this once and 
you know, get it to a company that's going to, you know, keep it going and, and um, prosper with it, not somebody that, you know, might dabble in it and then lose it, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree, but I, I just don't know if that's kind of like affording these businesses like the privilege because they already have a wine and mall license. Like, I don't know. But 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 you can get a wine and mall license. Like you can get a seasonal. Right. So, yeah. so anybody that's got it, they already got it. Sorry, Brian, I can't think. hear you. Brian, I think you moved away from your speaker or something. <laughs> Are you can hear me? That's better. But, oh, and, okay. You look a little bit like you're an informant too for the FBI because you're just in complete silhouette. Yeah, I don't know. I got a there you go. <laughs> joined us from an undisclosed location. Um, I, I, I wonder if it is fair too, Annie. It, I mean, it, it seems. I think it, that's the one thing we need to noodle out. Yeah. You know. I think on the one hand, like I said, if it's an established license holder, um, that adds to their to the application. If you know that they're in good standing with their current license, I think that's an important factor when approving an all alcohol for somebody. Um, but I can also see how it would create some disgruntled folks as well if they didn't have the opportunity to be involved in something that's a lottery, anyways. And it would, it would be helpful to know if this conversation <laughs> happened the last time, but we're not going to know that without the minutes, I guess. Right. Yeah, I don't know where they're, they're no, I, like, two, half of 2014 was just not in any of the files. I, I don't know where they went. And it was, it was right when Cindy started the job. Yeah, she was brand new. She was brand new, yeah, so, I don't know. I don't remember any um, in-depth conversation like this, I'll be honest. We didn't set um, any kind of stipulations um, that I recall, like we're talking about doing now. So I, I just, but I, I mean, I can't be 100% sure, but I just I feel like I remember doing, going through this. I am getting old though, so. Uh, Helen, what are your thoughts on that question? I don't know. Yeah, I'm going back and forth on it because, I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't know if it's true that it's an indicator. On the one hand, I think, oh, it could be an indicator of future success holding an all alcohol license because with an establishment that is experienced with the wine and malt. Also, I would think that they would have a, uh, a faster setup to be able to, to be serving all alcohol. Um, but, you know, who knows, there may be some go-getters out there. I guess the other way to do it is if we say something like there needs to be, I don't know how you state it, reasonable progress towards getting set up or towards using it within, you know, 90 days. Like some kind of language that says we're not going to yank it from you if it's not set up within 90 days because it might not be the fault of that that owner. Um, but saying that you've made some kind of, you know, reasonable progress. I don't know if there's specifics. You can say you've, you know, you need to do whatever it is you need to do. I don't know what those things are. Um, well, you could be using it within, yeah. uh, sorry, 90 days. I mean, that you could say may, you want 90. yeah, and that may sort of self-select. I don't know if people might self-select so, saying if they know that they can't actually get that set up within the 90 days, then they may not apply for it. They'll anyway. probably well, still apply that, and ask for an extension. Right, right. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. If there's something that's beyond their control, well, certainly we would give them the leeway to deal with it. Yeah. Um. I don't know if this matters, but do you know historically how many... Do restaurants typically go start with wine and malt and then go to full alcohol or are there 
or does it depend? I mean, are there some restaurants that just jump right to full alcohol? Yeah, I mean, Andrew's saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's a course of what's available. Right. And I think that's why the, you know, the, the backdoor deals are what everybody tries to do if they can. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you could do a private sale, you know, um, obviously then you, you don't have to go through the, anything like this and you're guaranteed the license. Do we have other licenses out there now that are up for sale? I'm trying to remember, like with Pine Grove, right? And Pine Grove is in the process of being, well, it's, it's being sold. Mm -hmm. um, and the World War II Club. Um, there's a few wine and malts, but I'm not so worried about those because like fish hooks not renewing. Um, but they don't they don't really hold much monetary value because someone can get one right now. You could get a seasonal and then trans and convert it to an annual granted it's for five thousand dollars. So it's it's about a five thousand dollar value. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think Con Convino renewed last year hoping to sell. I don't think they're gonna be selling or renewing this year. Um, but we do everything we can to hold on to the all alcohol because if we lose it, we lose it. Hmm. So, so the the only one right now that's up for grabs is the World War II Club. Okay. And do you know what they're trying to sell that for? Andrew probably would know. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. That I talked to them. I know they're renewing it. Um, so they're hoping to to sell it. Yeah, so this will certainly temporarily devalue that <laughs> that license, right. but um, and sure. also it sounds like it's a different situation than last time. I think there were were there none available when this one went up for lottery and then four more became available. There yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, and I mean the World War II Club, you you have to pay a steep price for it, but you also have the luxury of transferring it in the future. Right, and, and these ones have no value mm -hmm. except for to your current business, right. yeah, which is huge. So, yeah, okay. So, it sounds like is that our only sticking point? Is this putting that restriction on it? Um, I mean, I'm not tied to that, it's something I threw out, threw out there. Um, yeah, I'm not tied to it either. You just, sorry, Brian, you went into the black hole again. I, I couldn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, which restriction are you talking about? The, should we limit it to wine and malt holders only? Uh, I don't know. I, I think it should because if I was in somebody's position that was, I don't know, I guess my point is like what Annie said, if you have any interest in selling alcohol at all, you've already got a wine and all. And um, if your motivation all of a sudden is because the fall alcohol license is available um, through a lottery, I mean, that's not fair to an established uh, person that's really working hard trying to better the business, in my opinion. But, that's just my way of looking at it. It's a good point. Yeah. If they wanted the wine and malt, they could they could have it. Yeah. All right. Oh, you're I'm muted. The amount of Zoom calls I have, and I can't unmute myself by now. <laughs> um, just another thing to complicate things more. You might want to think about limiting it to someone that doesn't already hold an all alcohol license um what do you mean is that who is what it's, oh meaning, meaning meaning for having more than one establishment and wants a second so for alcohol? example eric has five licenses oh yeah, yeah. 
you yeah. might want to limit it to someone that doesn't have already an all alcohol license. Yes, I'm all for that. All yep. for that. So, <laughs> so in that case, it would we wouldn't even be including all alcohol license holders that you would just be including wine and malt license holders. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And if you don't want just wine and malt, it would be wine and malt and common Vic license holders. And that would include every every restaurant. Right. Right. So that's your that's your option. Yeah. Um, there was some language too in that last one, specifically because of Eric Stewart saying, "If you've had one revoked, you can't certainly you can't." Yeah, yeah because I believe jumping in the lottery for this one. Yeah, because they were they revoked the license from Twenty Six Center Street, the Green Room, because it was a pocket license. So, and then they they made it so I forget the language, but they made it so basically he, he couldn't apply. Okay. So I guess, I mean, we should throw that there even though it may just be to cover him. I don't know what the history is, but if you've had one revoked, you know, in the past and you, you can't be in the running for this one. Yeah, it says no, no applicant who has had a license revoked will be eligible. Yeah. Yeah, so I think if we put that restriction as well as the, no existing, you know, owners of a full alcohol license. And and are we saying wine and malt license holders only? Is that? I mean, I, I, you know, good arguments have been made to say that that could be restricted to that. I agree. Yeah, I say one hundred percent. I can't really hear Brian, but I'm pretty sure he said I say one hundred percent yes. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> Lean into the voice Ryan, are you like Duncan or something? That's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have um, someone who will be open four days a week or more. Um, someone that can put the license to use no later than 90 days. Um, no existing owners of a full alcohol license and someone that's already operating a business, whether they have oh. wine and malt or not. That's the last question. I think I say yes to the wine and malt license holder. Yeah. I do too. Okay. okay. Okay, does someone want to motion that? You don't have to repeat it. I'll make a motion. To what Annie said. <laughs> and are we just motioning that the whole thing, like these are what we're putting on it and, and also the process? Sorry, sorry. So, you're, so right now you're voting on like the criteria. Um, I guess included in that motion, it can be that you're going to go forward with the lottery process. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And I think, Annie, I know you're going to work on it, but you can certainly streamline that language from whatever it is you just said. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's established that's business that, yeah, yeah, in good standing that has a one and malt license. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and no all alcohol. Yeah, and doesn't, right. yeah. And it's never been revoked, so. Okay, Holy. is that a motion? Yeah, you motioned. I need a second. A second. <laughs> All in favor. favor. Uh, there you go. All right. <laughs> we did it. All right. Um, and I'll I'll communicate with you more when I get more information when I work on this a little bit. Okay. Um. So. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Not much, it's just the minutes. Um, Brian and Natasha can vote on September 2nd because Helen wasn't there. 
And then October 7th, Helen and Natasha can vote on that. Brian wasn't there. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for September 2nd, 2020. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I make a motion to approve the October 7th minutes. Anyone want to second that, Natasha? I'll second. Sorry. I'm like, wait, was I there? But yeah, I second. Yeah, so yeah, you, you were there for everything. Uh, all in favor, yes. Aye. Aye. Any new business? Nope. Are you still working from home full time, Annie? Yes. Yep. License renewals have been the death of me. Oh no. Because it's all electronic now. So I just I had to just redo the whole thing. It was just a mess. Yeah. But do you get a sense through this process if there's gonna be if we'll get news about other restaurants going out of business? Um no no liquor. That's really, uh, that's really right now, that's all I'm focused on. Um, I mean, Bistro La Gras is close, well, they're transferring to a new owner. Um, someone's buying it. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about Mama Iguanas, but I know they're renewing. Um, Pine Grove is being sold, Webster, uh, Fish Hook is not renewing. Um, I got word that the Majestic maybe is not, is closing, but I haven't heard. Um, Freckled Fox Cafe in Florence is closing, or closed already maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's all I got for right now, but. Yeah. <clears throat> Still honestly amazed that there's so many that are staying open. I mean, I know. I hope they're. Yeah. So. All right. Do we have anything else? I got nothing. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Thank everybody. You. All right. Take care, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Bye.